This is my spiritual integration video blog assignment for Counseling 501. Um, just to begin, I have read Counseling Principles and Christian Beliefs in, it, in its entirety, um, but for this assignment, I am going to choose one counseling professional value that I agree with and one that I don't agree with. I'm going to discuss them a little bit, um, and I'll conclude with just some thoughts that I have based on a research article that I read about how um, I personally can grow in value conflicts in my therapeutic um, future relationships. But the first counseling professional value that um, remains in harmony with my personal and spiritual beliefs is non-maleficence. According to the ACA Code of Ethics, non-maleficence is avoiding actions that cause harm. Um, and when I read this value, I agreed with it um, pretty quickly. Um, I do agree that counselors should seek to actively avoid any action that har may harm their client. Um, but I think the Daniels textbook just gave me a little bit more insight into what this means on a much deeper level. Um, according to our textbook, um, Daniel says that counselors should have enough self-awareness that they don't interact with the client out of their own woundedness. And I thought this was so insightful. I just, um, I think my eyes were open to just a whole other world of what it means to avoid non-maleficence in a counseling relationship. I had never before connected non-maleficence with my own personal self-awareness. And I just really agree with um, the points that our textbook made on the specific counseling value in a, a therapeutic relationship. Um, the personal or the professional counseling value that I still struggle um, to agree with is autonomy. According to the ACA Code of Ethics, autonomy is fostering the right to control the direction of one's life. Um, our textbook says that autonomy refers to a counselor's respect of a client's choices um, and that clients have a right to decide their own fate in all aspects of life, even if the counselor doesn't approve of that decision. And although I agree with what our textbook says about respecting a client's choices, I still struggle to agree with what this value looks like for me as a Christian counselor and counseling a client who wants to engage in and um, set goals for how to live more fully in a sinful lifestyle and i just really struggle with understanding how i would navigate that scenario um, but i really appreciated what our textbook said about this point um, they referred to how god is described in the bible as interacting with creation and how he worked in um, our, our textbook says collaboration with um, humanity gave them free will and allowed them to have their own way and this in itself was an expression of his love um, and, our, and our textbook just says that setting aside my personal principles and beliefs about um, my spiritual values in a client and in, 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 in that way interacting with a client um, based on their own values um, is is and it, it where it requires my own belief in God trustworthiness and um, that he in loves and is in control of my client's life and that I can trust him with their life um, regardless of what decisions or goals they decide um, one research article that really helped me just understand how I can further um, wrestle through this conflict value in my own life is an article titled Christian Counselors and Affirmative um, Counseling of Lesbian and Gay Clients. And this research article explored the lived experiences of Christian counselors who maintain a personal faith and who self-identify as providing competent and ethical counseling of LGBTQ clients. And they just um, made three recommendations in how um, Christian counselors who are experiencing value conflicts can grow and move forward. That really um, helped me to reframe this area as a counselor in training. Um, and the three, these three areas were acknowledging growth areas, um, so acknowledging blind spots in my own counseling um, with clients and recognizing that um, this is always going to be a process of growth for me as I learn new things um, and I can't um, always approach counseling in a black and with a black and white mentality the second one is to just engage with the lgbtq population counselors um 
seem to be able to engage better with the LGBTQ population when they actively sought relationships with them because they were better able to understand their own worldview. Um, and that the third way was just supporting growth in these counselors by providing safe spaces for these counselors um, to discuss their value conflicts openly. And when counselors were able to discuss their values opening openly in a safe setting, they were able to work through these value conflicts quickly um, in order to better serve their clients. And so I, um, just moving forward, I would like to try to incorporate these suggestions into my own study.